We're proud to bring to the podium now the mayor of Kalispell, Mark Johnson, who will introduce this program. And Mark, uh, our congratulations to you and city council and your team at City Hall. Uh, some really, as we just covered right there, I think some things that the Kalispell Chamber is hugely supportive of that we think are going to be great for downtown and the business climate. So thanks for the great work you're doing on behalf of businesses here in Kalispell. Thanks, and, Joe. And uh, let's hear about what you have planned for you, us you this afternoon. You forgot about one team, though, Joe. One team. One team. Yeah, you forgot about one of the teams. Yeah. I'm an extremely happy person standing here today. One, I'm addressing you. But two, Duke is sitting at home and Gonzaga's going to the Sweet 16. <laughs> Mr. Heron, that one was for you and me. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I listened to the intro and, and, and your presentation on passion. And, you know, you're exactly right. The people who serve our community, we have passion. Passion for Kalispell. Passion for our friends. Passion for our neighbors. Passion to succeed in business. So as the mayor of Kalispell, I stand here and I'm proud to work for you. I'm the elected official that represents the whole city and I have to set the ground rules for everybody so we're successful as a city. So as we look at this next presentation that Mr. Jens is going to give us and Doug Russell is going to give us, I'd like to look back in history. Let's look back at some of the challenges that Kalispell's had. If we go back 126 years ago, Kalispell was founded. We were a sideline city on the railroad. Rail is why we were here. Then we move forward, rail becomes less intensive, less critical, it moves to Whitefish. Highways become the backbone of the city of Kalispell. US 93, US 2. So that's what brought Kalispell into life and where we're at. It's also the challenges that we face today. We now have a bypass on the west side of Kalispell that reroutes traffic. How will that impact downtown Kalispell? What opportunities does that present? We received a $10 million Tiger Grant to move the rail lines that gave birth to the city, to move those to the west side into a rail park to relocate businesses to that part of town. What opportunities does that give us? So we're sitting here at the precipice looking forward at the next 50 years. I know you're looking at the next five years out. Where'd you go? We're looking out the next five years, I think out the next 20 years and 50 years. And I'm excited to see where's Kalispell going to be in 50 years. I don't know if, I, if I'll ever live to see it, but that's the window I try to plan for. So with that, what I'd like to do is start looking at some of the challenges. What do we have to overcome as we move forward? And I'm not above saying when I look at myself in the mirror and I look at the city council of Kalispell, sometimes we are the challenge. And I remind the council of that, and we, we recognize that. So with that, what I'd like to do is, is introduce Doug Russell, who's going to come up and give the introduction of the program today, launching us into what do we do with downtown Kalispell? What are we going to see happen over the next 20 years? Where do we want to go? So with that, I'd like to introduce Doug Russell. So extremely excited uh, to be able to talk about these various projects, and actually, you know, Tom Jens, our director of planning, will be doing most of the talking on the specific projects. But we really are at a very unique place as it comes to a municipality. And you look at all the things that you're going to hear about today that you're currently aware of. These things are lifetimes in municipal management, and we are slowly becoming that case study that municipalities around the country are gonna be looking at in terms of how did they do these things and how did that happen? And it's so hard to get these things done because you look at some of the same challenges that we have, they're not unique. They're some of the same things across the country. So while Tom's gonna to talk about some of the specifics, um, you know, I'm gonna talk about a different aspect of that and that's the concept of community. And you know, as I was planning this, uh, talk. I thought I was going to be pretty unique in terms of my direction with it, but then we started off with uh, Joe Cabernari and his statements on really focused around community, uh, presentation from WGM, hit a lot on community, because it's the community that is really going to define where we are going and, and how we get there. There's a, a political researcher, um, former legislator, former staffer, his name's uh, Marty Linsky. He's now uh, writes leadership books. 
But he coined a term that is, we are all the co-creators of our current circumstances. And in effect, what he's getting to is, whatever our state of being is, we all play a role in that. And it's that universal concept of community that helps us get to where we are going to go and where we need to be and how we're going to do that. And as we look at some of these projects, you know, they've been a long time coming and over different obstacles and different challenges. You know, looking at the rail park alone, which we anticipate is now going to be put out for bid in mid-April with hopefully a bid opening uh, later this summer for a project that's been talked about for 30 years. But we're at that point because as a community, we have created that set of circumstances of where we want to go into the future. And it takes that type of you know, that concept and that authority within the community group itself to overcome some of these challenges. You know, I, I know it's not a, a, a hidden uh, circumstance of the challenge we faced in one of the rail park components of coming to an agreement on a relocation. But what was so unique about that is that everyone wanted to get to that end goal. There wasn't anyone I heard that wanted to throw their arms up and turn and walk away. It was, hey, we're behind everyone involved in this. No one was taking sides, no one was doing that. It was, how are we gonna get everyone to come forward and be able to get us to that goal? And that is the power of community, and that's the power that allows organizations to come together, that allows private business to invest in a downtown that is opposite of what's happening nationwide. That's what brings the different groups together to really yearn to strive forward within a community and build that into what they want it to be. So with that, I am extremely excited to be part of this type of community that has really set that as its aspirational goal is we, we know we want to be better, and we want to build, and we're willing to put the work and be behind everyone as we do that. So with that, now it's, we can get to hear about some of those projects that are happening and how they do all play together. And right before uh, the meeting, one of the members of the media asked me about what I think the biggest project is, you know, that is going to be presented today or is happening. And the reality of it is they are all so vitally important because they all play a piece in that set of circumstances that we are creating as a community. So with that, um, I'm pleased to introduce Tom Jens, our Director of Planning, who is fundamental in a lot of this work in identifying different projects in terms of moving forward. And he can kind of shed a light on some of these different projects that are coming to fruition and kind of explain where we're going and where that vision is that we're all becoming part of. So with that, please introduce Tom Jens. Thank you. And you realize that when you're literally the last speaker and the cleanup speaker, there's a reason why what cleanup really means. Most of the stuff's been talked about, so I'm going to try to pull it all together and show you what's happening. That's my goal today. Uh, and it is an exciting time. What I want to do is just draw your attention to, this is an aerial photo of downtown Kalispell, pretty lovely place. Um, it was 19, or 2010. I want to take you back in history because I want to tell you where we were to where we're going. So 2010, Catherine Thompson in my office and I sat down and said, we're in the midst of the recession. What can we do to help this community get going? And we looked at a map and we looked at that map and we said, you know, maybe we should do something along the railroad tracks because let's be honest, three times this community has tried to, to do something in that area to pull the railroad tracks out of town. Three times they failed miserably. And we said, what are we waiting for? So we started developing a plan uh, for this area and what we did, well, it was a novel approach. We know the railroad tracks were an issue, but we went out and talked with every property owner that you see in green. We talked with those people personally. That's 360 acres of land. We said, what would you like to see for your future? We sent out seven newsletters. We held two years of meetings. And 90% of them, the first thing that came out of their mouth was, we want that railroad track gone. Well, I knew that, but being told that. And then we said, what do you want in place of the railroad tracks? My gosh, the tracks come out. Uh, and they said, we want a trail. We want greenery. We want a chance to grow our business. We want to be like another com every other community around. We want a chance to survive in an area like this. And we said, this is great. And two years later, we were able to go to the city council 
and get unanimous support for a plan. Now, it was just a plan. Quick snippets of the plan. Many of you have seen this, but I'm surprised when I talk to people how people will say, you know, a half the audience has never heard of the core area or the redevelopment plan. Just some snippets from the plan. So what if you were coming into Kalispell from the Evergreen area and you saw this beautiful concrete edifice and you said, what, where am I? What if that became a welcome to Kalispell sign and a pedestrian bridge because the train is no longer there? Uh, next, next slide there. What if you walked behind this very building behind my back and said, gosh, what beautiful landscape is out there versus the face of the moon? And what if it became something like a trail going through that opened up into uh, a, a landscaped area with buildings and activity and fun and excitement? Uh, next slide. What if you were standing on Idaho like I am right here and looking straight down towards the center mall in this lunar landscape and said, what could that be? What if it was multi-story buildings? What if it was retail on the main floor? Offices and apartments on the second and third floor? What if it was a parking structure because we're getting away from surface parking and on the main floor there was retail and parking on the second and third floors and we look at a different way of how we handle our community and how we do things? What if we said, what else do we need in our downtown core area? What if we brought in housing? We're talking dense housing. This is moderate, but what if we talked about really dense housing? There's a whole other generation of people coming through growing up uh, with different expectations of what downtown looks like. What if we actually did that and said, yes, this is a good thing. Let's bring more people downtown to experience what we have to offer. Uh, next slide. So we did, we developed a plan. Uh, this is our plan. And it's, it stayed as a plan, it didn't stay as a plan very long. Uh, Kim Morisaki, Catherine Thompson uh, came together from FACITA, from our office, and chased after a Tiger Grant, a noble cause, third try. 34 in the nation, we received $10 million. We parlayed that together with about a $33 million package. And that's what you're looking at right here. You're looking at the, the core area, which is this track and trail, but at the key linchpin is right up here, the old McElroy and Wilkin gravel pit site. That site, uh, was an abandoned gravel pit. Uh, we had a plan for the downtown area, but you know what? The one thing we were missing, when you pull the railroad tracks out of town and you build a trail, what do you do with the train? <laughs> and some people asked us, did you ever think of talking to BN? In reality, the dirty deed was done in 1904, as they talked about when they whitefish stole the railroad from us. And from that point, it was downhill ever since. So how do we make a success out of this? So. Uh, going with Fasita, Fasita actually purchased this site because you know what? They were looking at doing a rail park. What a marriage. We came together working hand in hand with Fasita ever since. How can we develop a railroad park, uh, industrial park, pull the tracks out of Kalispell, relocate Sanex and Northwest, Northwest Drywall, make that a success relocate them there, room for additional rail industrial development, another 56 acres beyond the 40 acres that Pasita owns for rail park development and really create a, a first class rail industrial park there. Which, as, as Doug said, uh, we are going out to bid in April. And when I say we, it's Pasita, uh, it's, it's the city of Kalispell, we're working together as a team. In April, we'll be going out to bid to actually develop, begin development of that rail park. Now, if you've been out there, you've probably seen gravel moving. Another great relationship we have, uh, the Platte Valley Community College, their heavy industrial class, heavy equipment operators, they have been out there for months working at reshaping that site, moving gravel around. Believe it or not, that's a played out gravel pit. There's about 150,000 cubic yards of gravel that has to be moved. So if anyone has any desire for extra gravel, Kim Orsaki is the person you need to talk to. So. We will be doing that, but again, they've been working for months relocating, relocating some of that gravel to various city and county projects. It's a great relationship. They continue on. But in April, not only will the, the bids be going out, hopefully for the rail park, but Senex as well will be bidding out their grain elevator and fertilizer plant construction activity for that site. June 30th, a date we're all waiting for, our environmental document should be completed. Uh, that is the green light for us to go and beat feet to get this thing going. July, August, we fully expect that that rail park will be under construction and you will start seeing Senex rise up out of the ground with Northwest Drywall to follow very closely behind. Uh, exciting times. So, two years from now, let's go two years from now. Oh, let's back up one. Let's go. Two years from now, we will be talking about literally rolling up the tracks and putting down a trail. Now, where are we with that? We are in the process of working with BN. Yes, we do talk with BN. Great relationship. Every two weeks, there's a phone call that comes through our department. Uh, they have begun the abandonment process. 
That's a process that has to go all the way through the Federal Surface Transportation Board. Uh, they're in the midst of it right now, moving ahead with the go-aheads. Now, we're not going to pull the tracks out till Northwest Drywall and Senex have left, but the moment they're gone, we're going to be in that position. Next summer, stay tuned. If you like to plan for a trail, look at the future of our community. We will be hiring a consulting team, and we will be looking at the design for what that trail will look like through Kalispell. Probably construction two to three years from now, but we're starting next summer with the actual design. And why? Why are we building a trail through through Kalispell? Because, because if you see anything color in this block of land, our original core area, those are lands that need to be developed or redeveloped. And if I'm looking right, I'm seeing the blue. The blue are, are pieces of property that have buildings on them right now that need to be repurposed. Don't you love that term, repurposed? But they need to be repurposed uh, into something. If the, if the yellow, those are vacant lands that need, need to be developed. And if it's red, those are three Cenex sites that Faceta will be acquiring from Cenex. Uh, we will work with them to level and clear those sites, clean them up, and get them ready for redevelopment. And your mind starts going, what could happen on all that property? What if I told you the library was looking for a new location? And maybe a, a fertilizer plant in a place near you might be an ideal location. Can you visualize a, 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 a library on the trail next to Woodland Park. What a place. Main floor library, maybe second floor administration and community rooms, maybe even a third floor. Ah, but I dream. But this could be real right there. Um, if you look at this piece of property right here, the Senex Farm Store, yes, that will not be a Senex Farm Store in a couple of years. Uh, but it could be something else. And if I'm looking at this major piece of expanse off behind the center mall, who knows who might come into the ownership of that property? I'm looking at the piece of grain elevators over here. And I just want to let you sit just for a moment. Stop and think. When you think of Seattle, what do you think? You see this little structure with a little space needle on top. But when I see the grain elevators, you know what I see? I see a brew pub down here. I see this six pack of concrete, and I see maybe a restaurant on top of a 160-foot structure. Now, I'm going to tell you that right now. There's two types of people in this world. There's the quick and the hungry. Someone is going to run out and do that. The rest of you are going to say, gosh, where did I hear that before? So think about it, coming to a place near you. But this opens up, this trail coming in with potential for some street crossings opens up 40 acres of land for development and redevelopment significant change in our community, significant opportunity. That's why we're doing all this. You pull out together and you go, wow. So next picture. So how are we going to do this? Joe's talking about our B3 zone. What is the city doing? Hopefully we're standing back and letting the private community do it. But one of the things we've done is come up with a different development, or different zoning designation for that area, an encouragement for redevelopment. And we started with where? One of the epicenters, Mooses. Uh, and we rezoned the Mooses area. The next slide. We expanded it from uh, Maine over to 3rd by Smith's, and we went all the way over to Rig Ford with this zoning classification just in the last five months. And now we're going all the way to the other side of the center mall. It's a, called our B3 core area zone. If anything you know about zoning, it's regulations. But how can this be a positive regulation? Next slide. We are doing some neat things with that zoning classification. We are eliminating setbacks. You can build lot line to lot line if you want to. In a sense, your lot just got bigger down there. We are eliminating height restrictions. Oh, come back, come back, come back. We're eliminating height restrictions. Um, so you can build as tall as you want. We are not concerned about height. Neither is the fire truck, the fire department. They have ladders now that go over 35 feet. No, actually, they build buildings better. You don't need to go up with a ladder. But we're talking about that. We're talking about cutting the parking requirements in half. You need parking, you provide parking. We're not in a position to tell you how much parking you have to have. Uh, Multifamily housing, we would love to have housing down there. Today, you go through a hearing process, planning board, city council, who knows what's gonna happen. We're saying, let's just make it a permitted use. So if you wanna build multifamily down there, if you wanna put multifamily on top of your retail or office buildings, let's go for it. Those are the things we wanna encourage down in that area. So those are the, what we're trying to do to help the private community develop, redevelop down there. Uh, okay, next slide. So we've talked a lot about the, uh, the core area. You know the biggest pushback we get on all the talk about the core area? What about the downtown? You guys are just forgetting about the downtown and we're saying, no, not true. So here you see we have developed what we call our downtown planning area, kind of a catchy name. Uh, it's, it's the courthouse is the south, going all the way up to center, two blocks on either side of Main Street. Um, next slide. We, what we did is we approached it somewhat like the last project. Everybody in green there, 
our people, we sat down and talked to one-on-one -on -one and talked to them. What do you want to see? You've bought, built, vested. Your future is tied to this area. What do you want to see happen? Uh, it's a novel thought, asking the people. Uh, and they came back. 90% again said, we want something done with our main street. Next slide. Um, yes, modern technology, there we are. This is our main street today. Isn't it a lovely place? Um, and what are the issues with Main Street? You know, if you drive down Main Street, it's just downright frustrating, isn't it? You just can't make a left turn when you want to. You see, oop, I missed it, and I don't know how ever to get back there. They said, we need to have a left street. We need to do something about the sheer volume of traffic. Uh, next slide. And you know, the interesting thing about this slide, I've seen it before, but see that? That looks like death waiting to happen, doesn't it? <laughs> I, trust me, no one was harmed in the filming of this but that just looks bad. But downtown is not walkable. You cannot get from one side of the street to the other without taking your life in your hands or someone else's hands. Uh, it's also not business ready. I'm, I can talk about that in a few minutes if you'd like, but we have a problem with our Main Street. You know, people talk about parking. Main Street right now is much more of a serious problem and it's hanging in the crucible right now even as we talk. Uh, next slide. The, um, as we look at our Main Street, I want you to visualize we're sitting at this end, at the north end, but what about the south end? We've got this courthouse, beautiful courthouse. The county commissioners gave us a gift. They put $5 million into remodeling that courthouse. Beautiful facility and converting a jail into a place to put attorneys. It's a phenomenal concept. So $5 million, that's the entranceway when you come into Kalispell. But what did that courthouse used to represent? That was our entranceway into Kalispell, and this is what's going on right now. Next slide there. Um, we are. Joe said, we always need to have a call to action when you have a meeting like this. How can this community get involved? That courthouse couplet, that's just not a, a, a fun little term we talk about. That is a reality that we feel is really hooked very closely to the future of our downtown. Uh, MDT in 1991, oh, history, 1991, I was there. Uh, we did an environmental impact statement that said if we redevelop Highway 93 from Summers to Whitefish and make it a four lane, 25 years ago, uh, that document was adopted in 1991 from Summers to Whitefish, Shelby, a four-lane highway. White, or Kalispell said, wait, time out. We need to have a bypass along the west side. Yeah, well, you thought the bypass, some of you thought the bypass was current history. So we actually got funding. We got that bypass built around the west side. But the lingering issue for MDT was they still had this document that said, from Summers to Whitefish, four lane. So MDT started dusting off their books and said, you know, this is the last piece of highway that's not four lane. Did you know that? It needs to be four lane. So they came in with a project and we said, wait a minute. So they uh, came up with some designs, some studies, and what we're looking at right now is that courthouse couplet, beautiful round couplet. I'm gonna show you another picture of it in a minute. But they said, you know, we need to look at four laning that. And we said, no, two lane. They said four lane. We said two lane. We love MDT, but oh my goodness. So the design you see is when they talk about four lane, we're not talking about four lane, we're talking about four lane. Faster, quicker, better, more. Because the environmental impact statement says the major reason for taking that, doing any work in the courthouse couplet, faster, bigger, more, and quicker, and they want to design it for traffic volumes. So as I leave this, we're going to keep here for a second, but whether you put two lanes on one side and two lanes on the other, whether you put four lanes on one side, it is going to be straightened out and speeded up. This design will give our downtown the ability not to handle 16,000 vehicles today that we have. This design will give the downtown the ability to handle 30,000 vehicles a day in 20 years. 30,000 is more than 50% of what we have out there. We consider that on not a good idea. MDT is trapped though, they'll admit they're trapped. Even though I'm gonna show you a few slides on why this doesn't make sense, their struggle is they've got an environmental document that says four lane. So let's reflect on the fact of what it used to be out there and worked just fine. I'm not sure if some of you remember um, the courthouse 1950s. Now I was not here, but from 6th to 8th, there was a, a landscape boulevard out there. This is the Doughboy that's still out in front of the Columbia Falls Veterans Home. There used to be a cannon. Somebody's actually acknowledged that they fired that cannon off one night. I don't know if they're on the council or not, but it was, it was a confession. Um, Streetlights, trees, landscape boulevard. This is what the entrance to Kalispell used to be. 
Uh, next slide. So as we go through our planning process and talk to the downtown community, we said, what could a vision be? Is this the highway 93 or is it a main street? This battle is being fought all over, and fought is a literal term, term of art, all over this nation. Is it a highway? MDT will say, it's a highway. The people who live and work downtown, who bought and invested will say, it's our main street. What is it going to be? We have a concept that talks about getting sidewalks extensions. Bulbas to get you across the street quicker, taking Main Street and making it a three-lane road with, you know, center turn lane, maybe or maybe not landscaping down the middle. That's the concept. More greenery along the sides, bigger sidewalks. You realize in 83 when that Main Street was redone, they shortened the sidewalks up, and that zip, you can still open doors on Main Street, but not much else. So how do you have a Main Street without sidewalks and, and life and activity? So we're not talking about angle parking right now today. We're talking still about it. parking along the the roadways as it is today, but giving a different design and a different feel downtown. Uh, and people said, how can you do that? I want you to reflect a few years ago, first and first, we're four lane roads that were shrunk down to three lane roads. Life predicted to end did not end. And how can we make this successful? Let's go to the next slide. We have just spent $135 million in doing a bypass from here all the way up to here. Uh, LHC, phenomenal program. October seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? When the north half at $33 million was opened up. Got to check my time here, I'm in trouble. Um, uh, but that was designed to carry traffic to dewater the downtown to make the downtown livable. We acknowledge we have some traffic issues. Next slide. Um, but the courthouse is still the precipice. Is that the plug that needs to allow more traffic to come through downtown? Or did we really invest in this to handle traffic? Next slide. Uh, West Reserve is getting hit pretty hard right now. There needs to be some improvements up there. Uh, this year, next slide, this near, I want you to do year, I'm gonna take you up to Rose Crossing. Uh, the Claridges, uh, who own LHC, are in the process of putting Rose Crossing through from, White, from 93 over to Whitefish Stage. It's gonna be an urban city road through there. Uh, and you know, if one thing LHC can do, they can build roads. So, next slide. So the city of Kalispell, we're sitting here saying, what should our next major transportation project be? And we're saying it should be Helena, or I always say that, Willow Glen coming up through here, not a major bypass, but maybe a three lane road that comes up by uh, Shopko and Snappy. It's not a new idea, but an idea that was always part of the package, it just never got built. And what you have there is you have a road system on the east side of town, the road system on the west side of town, a road system going through town, many ways to move traffic. Willow, Willow Glen itself will significantly impact we improve West Reserve, and suddenly we have a transportation system that is moving people all the way around. Totally possible in the next 10 years. And what does that do? That road, if it goes in, uh, actually will keep transportation or traffic through the middle of Main Street below what it is now 10 and 20 years from now. So we have an option before us. MDT designs in 20 year increments. Gotta love them, they do it, they do it well. A project has to last 20 years. So if that, oh, back up, who's, Ah, uh, 20 years. So my, our, our point is, we build for 20 years and we put this traffic down Main Street and we hit 30,000 population and what is? We've lost our Main Street, nothing is working. What's our next project? Our next project is Helena Flats. Let's forget building Main Street to be a highway and go to our next project, which is Helena Flats, which carries traffic around the town and let's bring our Main Street back to what it could be. And why is that important? Let's go back to the couplet, because this is what's going on in our Main Street, and this is just a series of the last three years. People have lost track of what's going on. But again, I don't have uh, Herberger's up here about to open. Starbucks, Seventh and Main just a facade improvement. Montana Coffee Traders is moving downtown here in the next couple of weeks. Bricks Bottle Shop, the Mystique Fly Shop, Sage and Cedar, Blue uh, Samurai. Samurai. Thank you. I'm saying uh, sushi on Main Street. The Toggery invested. Uh, Copperwood. Brewery Company, another brewery coming into downtown. Uh, Kalispell Brewery. I forgot WGM that sits right about here coming in downtown. Oh, yeah, indeed. Uh, life and activity. People are willing to gamble. Why? Because they have bought into the hope and the dream that this is going to be a better place and we're going to work together as a community to make this happen. So, last slide. And why are we doing this? Because Kalispell downtown was great at one point in life. We wanted to come back and be that great Kalispell we know. So with that, uh, I'm gonna bring it back to the last slide and I'm gonna say I'm about done, Joe.